it didn't just end. I didn't think about the fact that I had my phone in mom. It says it's still live. Yeah. Okay, now how do I get back into this? Okay, come on. Okay, I am apologizing about this. I am trying to figure out how to get back into my po into my broadcast so I can see the chat. Um, I can monitor it from my phone. There we go. Let's see. We are having minor technical issues because the last time I did this, the chat worked just fine. Um, so let's. There are no errors. Okay. I'm gonna chat in just to see if that helps. Well, no, I have to get back to that screen. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on. Copy video ID. Um, did I click the right button? Let's see here. Currently live. I think I hit this button. Aha, there we go. All right. We have the screen right now. All right. So here's what we are going to do. So the first thing we have done is ironed it. So it's nice and pretty. Um, and we are going to do a little bit of maths. I know everyone loves the maths, but <laughs> sewing is a lot about the maths. So here's what we're going to do to prep this. We are going to fold this skirt and I'm going to apologize because it's going to go into that microphone and we're going to attempt to fold this skirt in half. Um, so it's is not perfectly round. I realized see. earlier today. Hold on. Let's see what we're going to do here. All right. I think we're good enough. And then what we're gonna do is fold it in again. And now we have quarters, right? So this, we're just gonna make sure this is nice and flat. Now I'm gonna use my hands. So if you get under here, so see how if you take your hands flat, like come over here, you can actually feel how there's some weirdness underneath. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was saying about kind of coming in with your hands and really making sure. So you may have to come inside these layers yeah. and kind of get it smoothed out because what we're really looking for is to make sure that we are very nice and smooth. And then, once we're all smooth and on grain, we're gonna put some pins in here just to keep this buckled down. Yeah, because so, it likes to slip. Yeah. We want an uneven hem on this anyway. Yes. So we're gonna be okay. We're just gonna kind of take this by, uh, kind of let this sucker be a little bit what it wants to be. So I'm just gonna put the pins kind of right about here. We're just doing this so it doesn't slip. Cut through all four. Yeah, through all four layers. What we're really looking to do is kind of keep them. We don't have to pin all the way to that edge because we're not going to cut this edge just yet. Okay. What we're going to do is just kind of get a few like this just so that when we cut this here, it doesn't I'm gonna run away. On all right, I'm let's not do that. Me. Let's do it up here. I think we're good. Okay. All right. And if anybody gets to a point where they're not seeing us on camera, just like let us know or if our sound isn't good. Now, we are going to take the tape measure and use some math. So we calculated, so we, we have that whole old fashioned, like, you know, you got your diameter and you wanna get the radius kind of thing. So I cheated I used the circle skirt calculator. If you Google circle skirt calculator, I use the one from By Hand London, pop in some measurements and you're good to go. So we decided to use the hip measurement because we are making this an elasticized gathered waist. So if you think about it, it really just has to go over your hip mm -hmm. and then we're gonna pull the elastic down. So we're gonna use our waist measurement as our hip measurement. Um, and then we're gonna recalculate the length based on you know what we actually want. So by the numbers, our radius on this needs to be seven and one quarter. So here's what we are going to do because I don't have my other big tool. Do this the old fashioned way. So we're just gonna go from that point and we're going to find seven and one quarter and we're gonna make a little mark the whole way across. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's get the chalky chalk chalk chalk. This will work. And then you just wanna make a little mark. So if you wanna do that, just make sure your corner stays like right in that edge because that's gonna be what's really important. So you wanna find your seven and one quarter. Mm -hmm. Now, a trick on holding your chalk mm -hmm. is to do like this, and then we'll just hit it like that. And then that mm -hmm. way, just keep going kinda and then just make sure you've, you've got your, oh. yep. <laughs> that It's a little tricky and we can do it with a hard ruler. We don't have to do it with a soft ruler if I find where the hard ruler went. Here we go. Uh, that may be easier. There we go, yep. And let's get one up here. Oh, 
little just got chalk on the That's okay. and not on the <laughs> It's okay. It washes off. These boards are very sturdy. You don't have to worry too much about them. I'm just gonna scooch mine just right here to grab my mouse so that we have the right screen now. So I'm going to confess the way that I would have done this. Do you want to hear how I would have done it? Yes, I'm curious. Let's see. <laughs> so, I love hearing inventive ways. I would have, um, I wouldn't have known about the circle skirt calculator. So I would have guessed and I would have folded it as small as possible and just whacked it. It's a way. And then tried it and if it didn't fit, fold it back up and do it again. <laughs> We can do some math. Yes. Um, <laughs> now, you don't have so, to have a pre-made circle to do this on. You can do this on rectangular fabric. Um, we're going to hope that we can cheat and use the bottom that's already in existence. And then in that case, we don't have to do a hem. Yes. So now yes, we have this. Now we're going to really do some cheater stuff, and we're going to use the rotary cutter. So when we do this, we're just going to oh, – this is not – this is a new one, so it's not in the left-handed mode. I'm a lefty, so I have to move my stuff. Yeah, we should probably switch sides because I'm a righty. Yeah. There we go. You want to have... So rotary cutters can change sides. So if you're right-handed, it'll probably come with it already right-handed. But if you are left-handed, you want to have the blade where you can see it when you hold it in your hand. And this is a safety, so you hit that. Um, I have a habit of pressing my safety every single time I put it down because this sucker will slice your, and I know quilters who have sliced off the tops of their fingers. You can slice into, so, yeah. And I prefer the ones that are ergonomic because they're safer. Um, I do have, I don't have one here, but I have a smaller one that has the thing around it. And I put my finger down like that. And one time I slid my finger down the whole blade. Mm. Yeah. It was almost stitches. Not oh. quite. Um, <laughs> probably should have stitches is what that means. And you no, should... there's no scar, so it's no. okay. All right, so I'm just going to eyeball, and I'm going to push down good. Oh, nope, nope. No extra hands with the big blade. And now, I don't want to cut off my fingers. No. <laughs> so I hit that because I always hit that safety before I put that down. So now we have a circle skirt. So if we unfold this, we should be able. Now, if you have a magnetic uh, thing or one of these, what I usually do is I'll pull them on like that, and then I'll take my magnet, and then I just. Steal. We have those in school. <laughs> yeah, I magnetic ones are nice. All right, so now we want to be careful with the top of this. This is on the bias. This will stretch like nobody's business. Ooh. All right, so then if we hold it here, this should, yeah, I'll yeah. easily fit on your hip. And then when we go up here, honestly, I like that length. Yeah, me too. I yeah. think that's going to be good. All right, cool. So yes, now okay. we know Now we know what measurement that we gave this to get that. So that was 47. So now yes. we need 47 inches of waistband. Right. So let's get our waistband fabric, which this is an awesome upcycling project. I love things like this. And we need 47 inches of pillowcase. So um we have grain to think about right so we want this to be on the straight grain which we could do if you look at this and you look at the way the fabric's going you'll see there's like an up and down and a left and right and and pillows are always cut on the straight grain and you know it's on the straight grain if you tug and there's no stretch that's the straight grain if i were okay. to tug like this see how it's stretched oh. that's the bias so okay. give it a good tug and if it's not going anywhere here, you can try it. Give it a good tug. You know you're on the straight of grain. So we want to be on the straight yep. grain, not on. Not on the not bias for this waistband because we don't really want it to stretch because that'll just make it all weird because whenever it comes in, it's going to make it weird. Oh, because it's going to it'll bunch like, funky. It'll bunch up really weird. Okay. Yeah. And it'll just look weird. So, yeah. so if I were doing this skirt, yeah. well, the next thing I would do is – flip that waistband over and sew it closed and throw the elastic in it and put it on. Well, you could do that, but the reason we're doing a separate waistband is mm -hmm. because, you remember the other day, I was putting the circle inside, yes. and mm -hmm. so this here, so you guys can see this too, this circle is smaller than this circle. Right. So when we fold it in, we're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. sewing so yes. by making a straight grain waistband we don't have any problems oh <laughs> so 
that keeps you from having to bunch it and make uh-huh. it because that's what I've always just uh-huh. done before. It's just like, It'll be well, all your, <laughs> if you ever looked at a skirt that you bought, it doesn't have a waistband. It has a separate one. Right. And that's why. Okay. And it's just easier. It's actually way easier than trying to fold it in. If you have a skirt that's on the straight grain, like what they consider a dirndl skirt, which is basically a big rectangle that's gathered, right? fold it under. You know, pajama pants, fold them under because they're basically straight. But if you have something on a curve, you probably don't want to fold it under. You have to make what's called facing. So if we wanted to do that, we would cut something that has the shape of this circle. Mm-hmm. And then that way when we sew it together and fold it under, it would be bigger. Okay. So it would look like it, when you when you have it would go back out. So when you fold it under, it has room. Okay. So it would be like an invert, like a V. Right. So when you go like this, then it'll fold out. And like then that. it would lay flat. And then it and would then lay you flat. Have any exactly. Buttons. Exactly. Okay. But with a gathered waist, though, easiest is this. Let's get our handy dandy retardedly long ruler because I bought these and didn't realize they were a hundred and some inches. Let's see where we've got here. Oh, Short. this is, no, because we have two sides. We need 47 inches total. Yes. So let's put this seam halfway through. Okay. So we need 47 over two, which is 23 and a half. 23 and a half. Then we need to give it a bit. We're going to sew it together on one side so we can give it a half inch seam allowance. Because two half inch seam allowances is an inch. Yeah. So what are we at? 24, 24 and a half. You said 23 24 and a half. And a half yes. 20, yeah, so we're at 24 and a half. So yeah. here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut this. We're going to come up, actually, you know what? We even have a fold here. Let's go ahead and use this fold. Could, since we would just have to have it on the straight edge, could we cut it this way since there's a fold? Mm, if we do it this way, though, I don't think that's enough. No, not even close. That's not enough. Okay. So we don't want to do it that way. Um, technically, you could make it work if you pre-gathered that to fit this. But then this has to fit over your hip because you're going to pull it on. Otherwise, right. then it had to go overhead and it'd get all weird and like, yeah. No, I'm going to so, have way too much stuff on top yeah. to be doing The more that right. I think about it, we don't want to use this because we need to hook that onto the other side. So we're okay. going to not use the fold here, but we'll work up at the top of the fabric. So we're just going to actually cut this fold right off. Okay. And then, um, so we're going to estimate. So how wide is your elastic? Let's figure out how wide we need this to be. All right. So we need an inch. So we need at least two inches because mm-hmm. we're going to fold it over. Right. And so if we use, a little bit more. so then you have to figure your seam allowance. I almost always use a half inch just because... It's enough to sew with, and it's easy to cut with. <laughs> yeah. So you mean times two, so that means one inch. So we have one inch plus one inch, so that's two inches. And then I always add just a wee bit more, so then two and a quarter. Okay. And then that's going to fold us over and get us that one and a bit, because I like to leave a little room to weasel the elastic through. Yeah. Just, I never like too tight the casings. They're really tough to put the elastic through. So we're going to have something that's, two and a quarter inches this way by half of our hip measurement okay so let's get a longer let's get some. i'm gonna ask a stupid question where'd the seam allowance go in the two and a quarter inches we have one inch we want so the finished we want mm-hmm. to be one and a bit inches long right okay here let's get paper <laughs> let's get paper because papers are helpful i'll be right back let's get paper no 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 you're very She has me on here so I can ask the dumb questions. <laughs> no, I actually, I actually write this down for me when I do it. So, <laughs> all right. You, you so, should see some of the stuff that I've written down. It's really funny. When we have it. our, so we have our waistband, okay, and we want this to be one inch, right? Right. To fit that casing. But mm-hmm. we really want this to be more like one and an eighth, right? Right. So we'll just, we'll add that on at the end, which means this is folded over. So this is the fold line. Mm -hmm. So then we have another one inch. Now we have a seam allowance. One half, Mm -hmm. one half. Because each side needs a seam allowance because we're going to fold it through here. Right. So this is one, two and a half is, and and then three. three. Oh, so we miscalculated when we were talking. Okay. Yeah. So three. And then I usually add just an extra quarter. quarter. So three and one quarter by 
I see I usually write this and then we have our hip measurement which is 47 over 2 and then that gives us our total which what was 47 over 2 I'm retarded today 23.5 uh, 23.5 20, but then so 23 and a half sorry we're using fractions yeah 23 and a half but then we're gonna need to add a half inch seam allowance on both sides of that so we want 24, 24 and a half. half so three and one quarter by 24 and a half yes and that yeah. is our waistband piece now once you know how to make one circle skirt you can make all of the circle yeah. skirts that's the cool thing i go on a circle skirt frenzy usually um <laughs> I want to make more because I just got a bunch of really cute leggings, so I want circle skirts to wear with them. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to just try and make the most out of this because I'm not a fabric waster. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the nice thing about this is I think it cost me 50 cents. Still, I'm <laughs> cognizant of it. So what yes. we're going to do is we're just going to use this, and we're just going to get this right off. So hold on. No, 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 no. Those are the paper scissors. We don't use those on the fabric. I am going to use... Where did, aha, this go. <laughs> Look, so we're just going to go here. I always chalk out before I cut in case I make mistake. <laughs> mm -hmm. I make mistakes readily, so we chalk out before we cut. And to make our life easier, what we're just going to do here, let's just go all the way to the end here and not worry about it. So we're going to cut off. We're going to quickly cut off this seam because we don't want this. This is, this is nonsense over here. The frustrating thing that I've noticed about using um, the thrifting stuff, fabric that I use is they're never square. No, well, that's because over time um, fabrics get washed. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to square things up. The grain will stretch. In, you know, so the fabric will stretch and it will stretch. Now, typically I'd use a ruler to do this, but it will be okay. So I'm cutting away from my hands. So this hand's staying back here, mm -hmm. right? Because it is really easy to cut ourselves. Now you don't want to be applying too much pressure. If you find yourself applying a ton of pressure, you need a new blade. You need to use okay. these. You should never be applying like lots of force. Uh, that's new blade territory. All right. So now we've got an opening here, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, almost. Kind of. <laughs> we'll take the scissors and cut it there. Let me get the good one. All right. We're just going to cut that here. The reason I did not just cut on the edge like that is, as you can see, it wasn't quite squared up. Right. And oftentimes you'll get like a really weird edge when you do that. All right. So now we can measure up. And so I will just take... Actually, I'm going to take this one. Because this one is the easiest. So we said, what was our measurement? Three and a quarter. So the reason I like this tool is because once I've got it set, it's That's set. That's cool. I know, right? This is Where one do of those. You get those. This is at Joann's. They have them okay. in the in the quilting section. They're not cheap. They're like twelve dollars. But if Ooh. you use your coupon on it, like yes. you can usually use your coupon like a forty percent or a fifty percent off. But this is one of those tools that I don't like to live without. Like I honestly think this one is worth the twelve dollars. <laughs> it is okay, it is a no like it is a no not even gonna think about it so since we don't have to worry about any of the extra business on the fabric we're just gonna go ahead and cut the whole length here right and then we'll cut it second cool. so we're just gonna take this here now and just line her up and take our chalk and if you notice how I'm holding the chalk I'm kind of you know just like taking it along the edge and then that will help the chalk to work better. Okay. And you can sharpen the edges of the chalk because um, it will get kind of like, it won't have a good edge. And you can either take your scissors and just do that. I do it with a hobby knife or your scissors. They make like a sharpener for it, but it's stupid. It's tough. You already have scissors. You just take the side of your, not your good scissors, but your crappy scissors. Take right. your paper scissors. Just take the side and hone it in and, you know, it's just chalk. We've all done that with where chalk. do you get like the massive chunks of chalk taylor's chalk you can get them online um i can send you home with some because i buy them in the big boxes okay so uh but yeah they have that at joann's too they usually have a pack of like three different colors uh, so then they also have this kind this kind is when you're trying to be really accurate this kind is really Whoa. good 
because it makes really skinny lines. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Those are also not cheap, but then again, you can refill these indefinitely. Yeah. So, and they have so much chalk. I haven't. That's super fun. I haven't even used all of this one. I've had this one for like three years. So. Wow. Like, because I use different colors. And the reason you get different colors is um, white works good on light, but almost. You don't want to go too crazy. Like, you want to be able to see it. The only problem I have with sometimes this type of chalk is it can be a little bit weird where it actually sticks on your fabric and doesn't want to come back off. Mm. This one is usually a better quality chalk. Okay. But when I'm on the inside, I don't care. And then yeah, these, for instance, are wax, so these won't come off. So when yeah. you need markings that won't come off, same thing with these. These are wax, so these won't come off. But sometimes so like you don't want them on the... Wash them? If, no, if it's on the inside of a garment, because when we're moving, when we trace out things on garments and we're moving them around a lot, it'll the chalk will wear off. Yeah, so like darts and things, yeah. So that you don't want to have to go back and get your pattern out and be like, oh my God, and then your pattern is shifted, and then... So, see, these work to make a nice thin line. Now, these work really good on mitts. Yeah, because it's got the yep. little, it's got like a little blade in there that keeps it moving. It's a little like roller. Yeah. And then, so if you want to just cut that whole way down, you can go ahead and cut her. <laughs> You're the left handed pierce. No, those aren't left handed. They're right handed. No. Huh. I don't, I, I uh, tend to, well, actually, I only buy the right handed scissors because I cut right handed with my scissors. I learned to do it as a kid. So. And I learned from one of your other streams. Yeah, I how not to get the jaggies. But I didn't remember until you told there me. There you go. Yeah. It's the simplest things. My sons are always doing that too. They're like, Mom, you know all this like cool little stuff. And it's like, yeah, they're just little things that I've picked up along the way because I'm a little bit obsessed with learning this stuff. So. I watch and remember, but see, you get these beautiful little no jaggy lines. Now, those scissors can be a little weird to use because they're very tight. Those have micro serrated edge. They're supposed to be for like super shifty fabrics. I've never loved them, so I want to get a new pair in here soon. Those are, I mean, they're good quality. They're gingers. Yeah. They're just, and they're very sharp. They're just tight. But I think it's because my hands get sore easy because I have like some from using a computer incessantly. All right. So see, now we left all this fabric for another job. Yay. I don't like to waste. And all we cut off was that tiny little bit. All right. So now let's leave it folded like this. So this is going to be one side here, mm -hmm. right? And then we just need to measure off to the other. And we don't even have to work very hard because this has measurements on it. So what do we say? Nice. 24 and a half. Well, we'll do 20. Yeah. We'll do 24 and a half, yep, yeah. and just mark her right there. You can see that one. There we go, and then cut it off, and you're good to go. Hey, Gary. Hey, John, I see you joined. All right, you wanna cut that? No, I cannot. No, it's close. That's why you need really long shears. And this is still even technically usable. Yeah. <laughs> well, we might be able to use that for the elastic. Like, for the which part? Oh, yeah. Well, we can use that, yeah. Another trick I learned last time. Yeah. So, now what do we want to do? We want to sew this together, but this way. Right. So, we're going to turn it inside out, and we're going to sew it at one half inch, just right down there. So, if you want to pin it mm -hmm. while I grab the machine. And we're going to see if this new third camera thing... Does its job. Yes. And I brought my usable bias tape to show you how we can do a little meaty thing on the inside. Cool. Using fusibles. Yeah, probably shouldn't pin where you're trying to. Oh, you're fine. I come from a big family, so we don't have a lot of extra space. So we're cool. What color are we going to use? This color? Yeah, I think so. Or do we want to use this Or do you want to use a darker brown? This color might be... Oh, I'm going to show you a trick. Mm. Don't pin yes. it that way. Pin it. So what I like to do is keep the pin heads on this side. And I'm okay. going to show you why. 
So when we keep the pin heads like this, I learned this in college, but I don't remember. It does not matter which side we put it in the machine now. Okay, got because it. Because in this is a good habit to start because sometimes you need to do directional sewing. And when you do directional sewing, like in darts and things, you want to have, yeah. Right. Be <laughs> so able to put it in. Be able to put it in direction. any which way. So, got it. And I did when not you, learn that in college. And when you take it perpendicular to the seam line, then as you're going through, we can pull them out easy. Got it. So, yeah. That's a, a little trick that I actually learned from Susan Calgy, who works for Threads Magazine. She's a couture seamstress, and that's her little trick she taught me. Yeah, just nice. learn all the things along the way. <laughs> all right. So let's see if we can make this work. Okay, I'm going to need a book. All right. They're going to be a little wonky for a second, people, so we're going to be, this is the new, the new and improved sewing machine view. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's melting. I have to use this like, it's a, there we go. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. All right, Ooh. let's decide our thread color while I plug this in. The other darker color I was looking at, I'm going to go off camera for a second, was this one. Because it matches the under, like the... Yeah, I think layer. I would go with that. Okay. Because if you can't match exact, I go for decorative. Yes. And this will be a little more obvious. You have other darker colors in your costume? Yes. So, yeah. So, like, we were just discussing thread colors, and um, if you don't have the right thread color that matches something exactly, one thing that I like to do is use a decorative color. So, and if you use Guterman, just so you guys know, Guterman brand thread, which is primarily what I use for sewing, um, because it, it's really good quality, it's very strong. So, um, for most things, I use an all-purpose polyester thread. Um, it's very, very strong compared to cotton thread. It will withstand most heat and things. Uh, but they have a handy dandy little spot here that opens and closes. That's cool. And it actually, harsh, then whenever your thread is done, or you're done using it, I should say, put it through like this and holds it. Nice. One of the very first things I learned when I took your online course was um, that thread actually does matter. Yes. And it matters a lot. And you wouldn't think that that would be, like, you'd think that would be a no-brainer, but I didn't know that. Your quality of thread that you use will make or break the cussing you do on your project. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's not going to work. We are or not. <laughs> now we done with that. <laughs> it also, it doesn't fray as bad as cotton. Oh, no, no, it won't because of the type of, it's a very tightly spun thread. Now we're going to need to get this shirt off the one. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's okay. There we go. All right. Yeah, so, sewing machine is on. Let's see. Can we see it a little in more? That is awesome. All right. Now, we have a great POV sewing. All right. Put this one here so that I can actually, so we can work. All right. So, what kind of needle we have in here matters. Let's see what we have in here. What do I have? I think I have an 80-12. And what does that mean for those of us who've never changed okay, the needle Okay, this on is our a size 90. <laughs> All right, needle <laughs> size. <laughs> so um, depending on which thread and which fabric we're working with, we change our needle type and needle size. So um, needles come in a number slash a number. You can either use the first one or the second one. Both of them are just two different systems of numbering. Okay. So it'll say a 90 slash 11, an 80 slash 12, a 70 slash 10. So that's not um, a fraction. It's just Nope, two it's not a fraction. There's two different numbering systems. And so you can use either one. 
um, Europe uses one generally and we use one so like and it depends on where you were trained and what you like to do so mm. you can use either number I tend to look at the first number um, that's just how I was taught so like I look at an 80 so this is a 90 which is big it's pretty big actually bigger than probably what we need okay. um, this is a universal point needle or what would be considered a sharp uh, meaning that it's just a standard basic tip on there. Um, if we are doing, if we have a stretch fabric, we want to use what's called a ballpoint needle. The ballpoint needles have a slightly rounded tip on them. And what that does is it moves the fibers away instead of going through them. When you stab through the yarn in a knit, it causes the stitches to be weird. Mm -hmm. So if you want it to just move the yarns away. So ballpoint needles move the yarns. These needles stab through. But in a, yeah. in a woven, we don't have to worry about it. In a knit, we want to use a ballpoint. So it's good to have different sizes, different kinds. Um, we can probably bludgeon through with this ballpoint, or with this 90, just so I don't have to go get another one. I'm good but with that. It'll just leave bigger holes. You generally want to use the smallest needle available. So if you're breaking thread a lot, what's probably happening is your needle is either not the right kind or too big or too small for what you're doing oh. and it could mean that your needle needs changed your needle needs changed about every six hours of sewing of actual sewing that the needle does yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Judging i think i need to look, change the needle change your needle. if in doubt if you don't remember when you change it change it needles are supposed to be highly disposable I mean, I don't sew that much, but I don't think I've changed the needle on my sewing machine since I got it from my mother. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have a ton. Of, well, maybe once, because I think I broke it. Okay. Maybe once. And so the, what will happen on needles is we'll get burrs on the head, and tiny little burrs will start to shred the thread. And it can also get tiny little bends. And what happens when it goes down in and our bobbin comes out and it puts its hand in, there's something called a finger. There's a stitch finger that goes in and out and in and out. And I know this is like the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> so when the stitch finger, my kids love that word stitch finger. I don't know why, but it drives them insane that there's something called a stitch finger. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> comes in and it goes through that head. If that head is bent, even the slightest bit, it's not going to come through and you're going to get skip stitches. And if it's bent a lot, you can injure the head, your stitch finger, which can throw your timing off. And then that's back in the shop. Yeah. So I mean, that is all you want to change. If your machine starts doing anything weird, if it was working fine and then does something weird, you change the needle. That's a lot easier than changing <laughs> the tension first. Well, it could be. Like if you've messed with the tension though and it was working fine, especially if you ran over a pin or you ran over a real thick section, or it's making a weird noise. So jeans with the needle that... <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> jeans you want to use, they actually have what they call a jeans needle or a mm -hmm. top stitch needle. And those are big, like their head is very big, and they'll push through that thick fabric and get it apart. So, because what happens is when you have a narrow head on the, when the, when the size is very small, there's a lot of friction. And the more friction there is, the, thread, the needle gets hot, the thread starts to, it's polyester thread most of the time that we're sewing with, it starts stretching, and mm. we get thread breaking. Yeah, which and we don't like. Too much friction will not work. So when we have too much friction, we want to get that needle head bigger. So it pulls the fibers apart more, which puts less friction on the actual stitch. So when you think about the mechanics, it makes a ton of sense. Got it. <laughs> yes, it does. So... What we're going to do is, I'm looking in here, mm -hmm. if we look in here, my half inch is really stupid on here, and it's really weird to see. Yeah, um, it is. And if you have one that's really stupid and really weird to see, what I like to do is find my masking tape where I dropped it. I think I dropped it earlier. No, I don't know if I had my masking tape out. Um, here's some masking tape. We can put a little, this is wider than I normally use, but it'll work. And whenever I need to eyeball something, and I can't see it, I usually keep thinner masking tape, but this will do, is you can take your masking tape here and find your little spot where you know you're supposed to be. And what nice. Now, now I have a nice visual guide that I can see. 
I'm going to do that next time I sew with my yeah. <laughs> girls group. Uh, yeah, it's like a lot of people use washi tape because it's just it doesn't stick as badly as masking tape, which is a great idea because most people have washi tape laying around anyway for crafting projects. I have really thin gaff. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter as long as you don't want to get your machine all nasty. So you want something that removes easily. Yeah. And if you want to give yourself a ledge, you can build up a couple of pieces on there. And then I'll almost give you like a little ledge to sew against. And a lot of beginners, I have them do that. So it gives them a little ledge. See, I told people on Instagram that you were going to show me ways to make it simpler and easier. <laughs> so see, now when I put my fabric here, it's really easy to see where I'm at. Yeah. Before, it was kind of hard because my stitch plate here is weird. Really tiny. It's really tiny. tiny. This is a very inexpensive machine, and it's really tiny. It, it, well, all these machines are made differently, so, you know. All right, so this is the walking foot, and I know mm -hmm. you guys might have seen that. Now, I'm going to turn this here. Let's see. Can the camera see this? Yep. This is what makes the walking foot special is this business right here. Um, so it has gears in it, and if we watch how it does... Let's do a stitch here. See how it's going to pick up? Oh. See how it's picking up on its own? And I just made a mess out of the bobbin, of course. There we go. So you don't even really, except for guiding the fabric, you don't do anything with it. It walks itself. Well, even with a regular foot, it's going to walk itself. Well, right. But what this does is puts less tension between the layers. So where normally one layer would push a little faster than the other, this makes it so they feed through more evenly. Got it's it. very helpful when sewing to have this. You don't have to have it, but when you have stretch fabrics and you have weird fabrics, this is easy. Like that fabric <laughs> that you did your skirt of last, out of last Yeah, time? like that super slippery fabric. Yeah. Yeah, and like I won't sew stretch fabrics without it. Like I just won't because it's so <laughs> much easier. And they don't, this is one that I got on Amazon. I think this is probably 30 or $35, which sounds like a lot for a sewing machine foot, but these are one-time buys. Right. Um, the, I think I have one. The name brand feet will cost more typically. Um, they're a little sturdier, but honestly, I don't have a problem with this one. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, Steffi, you're online. Nice to see you. Someday you're going to have to come on here with me. I need you to do some wigs with me when we do my wig. Okay. So, all right. Let's see. Get in here. That, I can get that in here just a little bit. Everybody's going to get, like, seasick with me <laughs> doing this camera Do not thing. watch the third camera. All right. Is it focused? Mm, I like it. Be in here. Close. Let's see if I can get that. I don't know if it's decided it wants to focus or not. Sometimes you got to do this. I don't know if autofocus is on. Because sometimes I turn the autofocus off on these because they'll start doing the me, 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 me. Yeah, and then you really get seasick. Well, what did I just do? Here we go. The heck? Uh-oh. Where'd it go? Oh, my God. Sorry, everyone. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to come back. <laughs> oh, video doesn't like me today. <laughs> All I wanted to do oh. was fix it. Where Remember did it go? Remember what you said earlier about it not liking having two cameras? No, but where did it go? I'm going to click activate and then wait for a second. I don't know. It's supposed to be. Come on, Chloe. I'm going to remove it and re-add it. No, no. I'm going to remove it and re-add it. 